ask that you would turn with us to the gospel recorded by Mark. In Mark's gospel, we want to focus on chapter 15 <coughs> and verse 39. Mark chapter 15 verse 39. <coughs> And I'm reading from the King James translation. It says, And when the centurion, which stood over against him, saw that he so cried out and gave up the ghost, he said, Truly, this man was the son of God. We're going to stop right there and talk on this topic. An unlikely source. An unlikely source. <clears throat> An unlikely source. The text brings us to the cross. Jesus Christ. The text brings us to the hours that Jesus spent on the cross at Calvary. The text brings us to the final minutes, the final seconds of the life of of Jesus Christ, the man from Nazareth who gathered many followers, who healed many folk of sickness, who gave sight to the blind, <clears throat> the man, Ethan, who fed 5,000 people with two fish, five loaves of bread. Here in the text today is the culmination of his life. Here in the text today is the culmination of an intricate part of the gospel of Jesus Christ in that it is the virgin birth, the life, death, resurrection, eternal reign of Jesus Christ. Here in the text we see the transition that's happening between death and resurrection. The Bible says that in the text that when the centurion was stood over against him saw that he cried out and gave up the ghost that the centurion said truly this man was the son of God. The gospels record two incidents of Jesus coming in contact with a centurion and the book of Acts records one incident where a centurion is the center of attention. In the text today Jesus is in contact and with a centurion soldier. You remember in the gospel of Luke whereby there was a centurion that came to Jesus and said to Jesus that my servant was sick and ready to die. You remember in the text when the centurion came to Jesus beseeching Jesus that he would heal the child and Jesus said to the centurion go thy way your servant is healed and the Bible says that when the centurion got back the young person was healed and he asked what time did the healing take place and somebody said the time and it was about the same time that Jesus told him to go thy way thy problem is solved how many know that Jesus will tell you to go your way your problem is solved 
but you don't see it solved. How many know that Jesus will tell you that the battle is over, but you're still fighting? How many folk know that Jesus will tell you that your body is healed, but you're still in pain? Lord have mercy. Somebody need to know this today, that if the Lord said, go your way is fixed, then it is our responsibility just to go the way that the Lord told us to go. Sometimes we don't see it. We, we, it ain't manifested, but I heard the songwriter say, don't wait till the battle is over to shout. You can go ahead and shout right now. Don't wait till the healing happens. Don't wait till the pain stops to shout. You can shout right now. Don't wait till you graduate. You can go and shout right now. Don't wait for your business to become prosperous. You can go ahead and shout right now. Don't wait for your child to be fixed, your marriage to work out. Don't wait for all that stuff to happen. If God says it's going to happen, you can go ahead and shout right now. You remember in the book of Acts, the Bible tells us that that was a generous centurion by the name of Cornelius who was the first Gentile to reach out and receive the gospel and the first Gentile that the gospel affected following the pouring out of the Holy Spirit. Are y'all with this church? Now this word centurion basically means it means over a hundred people. Yeah, in other words, the centurion was equivalent to our U.S. Army captain. So this man was a captain in the army of that of Rome. Now please note that this man was not a Jew. Lord have mercy. He didn't understand the law of Moses. He didn't understand the Pentateuch. This man had no knowledge of the prophets. This man had no knowledge of the Messiah. This man was a Roman, a Gentile, who had no dealings with that of, of, of the Judas, Judaism system, had no concept of what was happening, but yet this man is at the cross. Can I tell something, somebody something? that Jesus will sometimes use unchurched people to further his gospel. Yeah, yeah, see a lot of us are so high and mighty and we sit in church as if we have a monopoly on the Holy Spirit. We sit in church as if we know how to cross the T's and dot the I's and we know everything about church because we know all the cliches, we know all the sayings, but can I tell you something, that there are times when the Lord will use an unlikely source to further his gospel. Now there was a Greek historian by the name of Poly Polybius. Now, Polybius was a Greek historian that lived from 220 B.C. to 146 B.C. And Polybius records for us that the centurions were chosen not by the merit of how strong they were. Yeah, the centurions were not chosen. Are y'all with me? Uh, but how strong they were, how courageous they were but they were chosen for their ability of deliberation. They were chosen for their intelligence. In other words, the centurions would be equivalent today to our West Point graduates. Are y'all with me? Yeah, yeah, these were men of intelligence. These were those who, uh, who were the strategists. These were the ones who were behind the infantry. Yeah, yeah, these were the men of intellect. These were the men of character. These centurions had to go through a rigorous training and a rigorous acceptance in order to become a centurion in the Roman army. In other words, to become a centurion was the height of your service to the Roman army. So here is this man, a centurion, a very intellectual man, a strategist, a military strategist, a West Point graduate, a captain in the army who is there at the cross of Jesus Christ. Are y'all praying with me, church? Now let me show y'all something here. Yeah, his occupation was, as we said, was captain 
over a hundred men. In other words, the word century means a hundred, and it simply says that this man was over a group of a hundred soldiers. And the reality is, is that the hundred soldiers, yeah, would all come together and what's called a cohort, and the cohort consisted of the captains who were strategizing that which the soldiers would go out and fight. Now, in this particular case, we know that this centurion had an occupation, an occupation of that of being over a hundred men. But on this particular day, this man had an assignment. The assignment had come from Pilate, and his assignment was to watch Jesus die and report back to Pilate. Lord have mercy. I, I wish I had somebody with me up in here. Yeah, his, his assignment was that he was to watch Jesus die and report back to Pilate. Are y'all with me, church? Uh, see, can I tell y'all something? Can I put a pen right here? There are some folk who've been assigned to your life, and their only job is to watch you die. Oh, y'all ain't praying with me yet. You got some folk close to you. Lord, watch it. Now, you got to see something in the text here. See, Jesus had already forgiven him. The Bible says that the first thing that Jesus did, he said to those who were crucifying him, forgive them for they know not what they do. You got some folk that are trying to harm you, but they don't really know what they're doing. And it's our responsibility, as the text says, to forgive them because they don't really know the danger that they're causing. The text says here that, that this man's assignment was to watch Jesus die and report back to Pilate. Are y'all praying with me today, church? Can I tell y'all something? See, Jesus had forgiven him, yet he still crucified him. And not only did he crucify him after Jesus had forgiven him, but he sat there and watched Jesus die. Lord, I wish I had somebody. See, 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 the devil has assigned some people to your life. Yeah, after you done already forgave them, they still crucifying you. After you have shown them the love of, Lord have mercy, shown them the love of Christ, uh, you extended forgiveness unto them, um, they still are crucifying you, uh, but not only crucifying you, but sitting back and watching you die. Oh, y'all ain't got no, y'all don't, y'all, y'all don't believe this. You got some folk waiting on you to die. You got some people that done set up some things in your, watch it. They may be in your circle. See, because this man was right there at the cross, uh, but he was there for no good. His job was to be there, watch Jesus die and report back to Pilate. You remember, yeah, 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 yeah. You remember the Bible says here, yeah, 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 that, 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 that Pilate in verse 44, it said, Pilate, when, when Joseph Armamathias went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus, uh, the Bible says that Pilate was marveled, Lord have mercy, that Jesus died so quick. Can I tell y'all something? See, 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 people didn't kill Jesus. Jesus said no man take my life but I lay it down to redeem so when the work was done when Jesus said it is finished the Bible says that he expired the last breath and he said into thine hands I commend my spirit see Jesus died in six hours but reality is that most people on the cross stayed there for three days it took them three days to die. So Pilate marveled, and what Pilate did after marveling, the Bible says that he didn't believe the report of Joseph Arimathea's because it wasn't an official report. But the official report had to come from the centurion. And the Bible says in verse 44 that Pilate called the centurion and asked him whether he had been dead. Yeah, anyhow. See, 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 his job was to watch Jesus die and report back to Pilate. Oh, Lord have mercy. Y'all ain't got me yet. Yeah, some folk job is to watch you die and report back to the devil. 
Y'all ain't see, oh, Lord, have mercy. I'm trying to help you today uh, to understand uh, that you got some death watchers in your circle. You got some death watchers, Lord, have mercy, that's waiting on you to die so they can take the report uh, and tell everybody you ain't about nothing. Yeah, they, for first of all, after you've forgiven them, oh, Lord, uh, after you've invited them back into your circle. At, God, I wish I had a preaching church up in here. I got, I got to find another church to preach in this morning. After you've done all of that, uh, then you still well, well, got what well, maybe, uh, maybe the reason you ain't shouting, because your assignment is watching people die. Lord have mercy. Yeah, the, the, maybe the reason you ain't shouting right now, because I'm talking about you. But let me talk to the people right now who watching people watching you to die. Can I, Lord have mercy. I need to talk to the folk right now who are hanging on the cross. I need to talk to the people who done forgave some people and they still trying to watch you die. I need to talk to some people this morning. Y'all ain't got me this morning. Yeah, yeah, who? Yeah, you've given your best. You've given your all. You've forgiven but then you still got folk around you uh, who still trying to crucify you. Lord have mercy. Yeah, the Bible says his job, mother, was to watch Jesus die and report back to Pilate. God, Lord, don't you know Satan got some employees? Satan got some imps? Satan got some employees? Satan got some folk that he done assigned to your life. Oh, y'all ain't got me yet. Uh, you see them every day. You got to talk to them every day. Uh, you forgiving them for what they've done. Uh, but they still crucifying you, watching you die and reporting back. Lord, have mercy up in here. This man here was an intellectual man. He had an assignment. His assignment was to watch Jesus die and what? Report back to Pilate. The Bible says here that this man not only had an occupation, but we got to see this man in his opposition to Jesus. Are y'all with me in the text? I'm still in the text. The Bible says in verse 39, this is the only one we're working on, that the man stood over against Jesus do y'all see that in the text I'm not making that up now this word against yeah it's a Greek word in antios where we get our English word antagonistic Lord have mercy so this man when he used the term against it does not mean that he was against like against the wall is talking about his disposition and his position. Yeah, his position is he stood opposite Jesus so he could watch him. His disposition was to watch Jesus die. Lord have mercy. Yeah, I wish I had somebody up in here. His position was he stood back. But he was antagonistic towards Jesus. Now this word in antios is the same word that's used in Matthew 14, 24. The Bible says in straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go to the other side. But then the Bible tells us that when they got in the ship in the midst of the sea that the winds was contrary. That word contrary is the same in antios, antagonistic. So the text is telling us uh, that this man had an issue with Jesus. But yet he was at the cross. He had an issue with Jesus, but yet he came to church. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Y'all ain't praying with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, he was antagonistic, yeah, to the ministry. But yet he showed up because he had an assignment to watch Jesus die and then do what? Report back to Pilate. See, you got some folk in the church, oh Lord, 
who was showing up in the church, yes, Sunday after Sunday, but they are antagonistic towards your ministry. Oh, Lord have mercy. Y'all ain't praying with me yet. In Antios, antagonistic. Yeah, he was there, but he was contrary. His position was a position of watching. Oh, Lord. He watched everything. Lord have mercy. His position was an antagonistic position because he didn't want Jesus to outdo him. He had a mission. His mission was to kill Jesus. He showed up for church when he wanted to. Oh, y'all ain't praying with me. But he didn't support the mission of the cross. He was there. And Lord, no, y'all ain't got me. Yeah, he had his church flow. He showed up for church. But he showed up with an antagonistic spirit against Jesus. Lord, I'm so tired of folk, Lord have mercy, that's just showing up. Oh, y'all ain't with me yet. I'm preaching today. That's just showing up, but ain't for the cause. Just showing up doing a job, but your job is not to promote the ministry. I'm preaching today. Antagonistics. Can I tell you something about, about antagonism? See, antagonism not always is not always forceful. See, this man was antagonistic towards Jesus. He stood back and watched. He hated Jesus. Oh, Lord have mercy. You got to see what I'm saying up in here. He hated Jesus because Jesus had fed 5,000. He hated Jesus because of his love. He hated Jesus because Jesus had compassion on people. He hated Jesus because he couldn't control the love of Jesus. Don't you know that people don't like you because simply you love everybody? <laughs> oh, y'all ain't got me. You got folk that can't stand you because of your love for others. You got folk that don't like you because of your sacrifice for others. This man had an issue with Jesus. Lord, have mercy up in here. He was antagonistic. He just showed up, but he wasn't a part of. As a matter of fact, oh yeah, I'm going because I don't like him. I'm going to watch because I know he ain't about nothing. I'm going to watch it because I know she ain't about nothing. So I'm going to watch at church so I can go back and report. I'm trying to help somebody up in here today. Yeah, his job was to watch Jesus die and then take the report to Pilate. The Bible says that he stood. Lord, y'all better stay with me, church. Yeah, the Bible says that this man stood. Histamine. He stood up over against Jesus. Contrary. Yeah, in opposition to Jesus, Lord have mercy. Don't you know that the church could be much farther today if we didn't have so many folk up in there fighting the ministry? Don't you know the church would be where she needs to be? Let me be specific. Don't you know Macedonia would be where Macedonia need to be if some of us just realize that it's about the mission? It ain't about me. Lord have mercy. If folk would show up for the right reasons, Lord have mercy, and take the gospel for the right reasons. If folk would show up and let all this other stuff go, Lord, and not be antagonistic to what God is doing because when you don't show up, Lord have mercy, and when you display Lord, a lack of love, you are being antagonistic to that which God has set forth. When you become all about me and my and I, when it becomes about you and your situation rather than the whole situation of the gospel of the kingdom, you are antagonistically harming the cross. Y'all ain't praying with me. And see, Satan has gotten so clever. He's gotten us so caught up into the, into the struggle. He's gotten us so caught up into the pain and the I, me, and my. He's gotten us so caught up and I need my space. 
He's gotten us so caught up in his, I'm all about myself now. Until we can't reach out and love one another the way the Bible has told us to love. So in other words, when we come into worship, we're bringing that spirit into worship. And we're trying to fake it. We're trying to front it. But I need to tell y'all something today. That, that you can fake it and front it with people, but God sees your heart. It's your heart that will get you to heaven. Y'all be able to hear what I'm saying. Your heart gets you to heaven. I know this hard preaching today, but I'm preaching anyway. I'm preaching in a way. I, I'm trusting God on this one. Well, God got me now. I'm trusting God on it. See, God just spoke to me the other day and said, it's about to be a Gideon situation. I said, God, I'm afraid because I'm looking at numbers. God said, it's about to be Gideon up in here. And God, y'all ain't hearing me up in here. Yeah, you see, the reality is, is that there are souls dying out there while you cutting up up in here. And you bringing all your garbage into your worship. Y'all better hear me. This man was opposing Jesus. See, his occupation, he's an interior. Y'all with me, church? Y'all got to stay with me today, church. And not only that, his opposition was he stood against the ministry. Yeah, you got folk that's standing against your ministry. Folk put standing against this ministry. Well, Pastor, I'm here, but you're here against. I'd rather have, like Gideon, 300 that's going to fight as opposed to 3,000 that's struggling. Y'all ain't got me yet. I told the Lord if it end up with two up in here, two that's ready to fight, give me them two. Y'all ain't got me yet. See, you got to let your stuff go. I, Lord, it's been too much preaching up in here. You got to let your stuff go. How is it that you are having the same conversations that you had 20 years ago and ain't got over it yet? Oh, I know I'm messing with some people up in here. Watch it here, church. This man not only had an occupation mm -mm -mm. this man not only church lord have mercy was in opposition to Jesus but he had a position where he had to observe it was the business of the centurion holly to watch every second that went down at the cross and to see to it that the sentence was executed. So if you notice, this man had to be observant because the report that he had to take back to Pilate had to be an accurate report. So he had to watch everything that went on at the cross. Lord have mercy. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, his testimony had great weight and value, Gary, because he had to observe everything. So his watching the proceedings closely, uh, yeah, the centurion, when he yeah, gave his wonderful testimony about Jesus Christ, we knew that his testimony was accurate because he had seen everything at the cross. Let, 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 let me show you something. See, his job, Fields, was to watch everything. He stood back in opposition with his eyes on every detail of church. You know, some folk like to position themselves in worship so they can see everything other than Jesus. Lord, I wish y'all with me up in here. I know it's cutting deep. But the reality is, is that church, uh, yes, yeah, sometimes, watch this, boo. He observed until something happened. Keep watching until something happened. See, he was against Jesus. But something, Lorenzo, changed his mind. Oh, Lord, I must say. He was in opposition. He was focusing on 
getting back to Pilate. But something changed his mind even to the point where Joseph Armamathias had to initially take the report back to Pilate. This man got so caught up into something at the cross that he forgot his job. I wish I had somebody with me up in here. I wish I had a prison. Yeah, yeah, he was, a, he was, his job was observed. Can I tell y'all something? Them folk that's observing you, that done crucified you, that you done forgave, but they still killing you, watching, waiting on you to die. Y'all ready to shout? Show them something. Y'all ready to shout? Yeah, 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 yeah. Them same folk that ain't supporting you. Them same folk uh, that are antagonistic towards your vision. Them same folk uh, that's trying to stop what God told you to do. Tell them to keep watching. Watch me die. Watch me struggle. Oh, Lord have mercy. <laughs> are y'all praying with me today? Them same people. Woo, Lord have mercy. That's watching you suffer. Watching you struggle. Y'all ain't got watching you work your behind off. Not offering a finger of help. But waiting on you to crumble under the pressure. Tell them keep watching me. See something happen. Something happened that changed his mind. Something happened that changed his mind. Now, come on now. Jesus was dying. Jesus was being crucified. He had already forgiven them folk. But they still were trying to kill him. But they saw something. Oh, Lord. What he saw was how Jesus died. See, first of all, what he didn't see, Jesus complaining about his situation. The first thing he didn't see, let, 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 let me kind of go. See, this man had crucified hundreds of victims. That was his job. His job was to crucify criminals. He was the green reaper. Yeah, his job was to kill people. He had seen thousands of men die. But then Jesus died differently. Oh, Lord have mercy. Can I tell somebody, while they're watching you die, die different. Die praising God. Go down giving God glory. Yeah, 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 yeah. Though he slay me. Yet will I trust in him. Why are you watching me go down? You better watch me praise. Why are you watch me suffering? You better watch me being faithful. Why are you watching me going through my trials? You better watch my hands in the air, my feet moving, my hand clapping. Because I need to tell you something. Keep your eyes on me and watch how God bring me out oh, Lord. you ain't got to support me y'all ain't with me yet you know how, you, 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 know, you ain't got to be on board so just, but just watch God cause God can do more with one percent of the people than some folk can do with a thousand percent see God can take a little bit y'all ain't got me yet See, God is saying he ain't concerned no more about you showing up and being in opposition by not being a part of. I wish I had one witness. Three things happened here and I'm going to leave you alone. First of all, this man was convinced. And we need to look at his conviction. He uses the word truly. You see that in the text? The man says truly this man was the son of God. Now, 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 now notice something here. 
Now, now Matthew's account speaks of that Matthew says that with the centurion and they that were with him changed their minds. Lord have mercy. Not just the centurion, but the folk that was with him changed their mind. <laughs> Somebody gonna grab this. See how you struggle is going to affect the people with you and is going to change their minds about the Lord. How you carry your burden, how you carry your struggle. See, I, I, I've had it with folk who's supposed to know about the Lord, but yet you saw, Lord, you gloom, doom, despair all the time. Can I tell y'all something? Jesus, oh Lord, gave you joy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You remember the old hee-haw song? Yeah, Lord, if it wasn't for bad luck, I'd gloom, despair, and agony on me. We walking around singing hee-haw. Y'all don't know that, but baby boomers know about it. But I need to tell y'all something here, that when the Lord changes your disposition, he'll turn your sadness into joy. See, it's about how you carry it. It's about how you carry, Gary, what you go through that will affect the people around you. Can I tell y'all something? See, 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 a, a true child of God, you are really, really never know unless that person tell you. Folk look at me, Pastor, you always happy. You know, you ain't got the problem I have. I'll be looking at folk like, really? I just don't go around gloom despair. Why? Because I have a Savior. And his name is Jesus. I'm almost done. His conviction. He says truly. This word truly is a word of faith. That means I'm convinced of a surety. That means that you can't tell me any difference. You got to see something. This man is saying you can't tell me any difference. I know this is the son of God. He says, I'm convinced. And, and can, can, can I tell you something about what, what Romans uh, 10 and 9 says? You confess with your mouth and believe with your heart that, that you shall be saved. Can I tell y'all something? That the moment Jesus got on the cross, the cross started working. The moment Jesus arrived on, at the first nail, the cross started saving. Can I tell y'all something about the first thing came out of his mouth was forgive. The next thing came out of his mouth was this day. Ye shall be with me in paradise. And then finally we see the cross working. This man say, I got faith. You can't tell me. I know who Jesus is. Where y'all way up in here? Because when you know who Jesus is, that frown flips. When you know who Jesus is, come on. That gloom goes to the other side. When you know who Jesus is, you got joy that the world didn't give you and the world can't take it away. Do I have anybody up in here that really, really know Jesus? Because once you know him, then you're walking in a different disposition. He was convinced. His conviction. Right there in the text, I didn't make it up. This man said, truly. This man said, you can't tell, I, you can wake me up, put a gun to my head. Truly, I am convinced. What convinced this man? It was how Jesus handled his situation. How you handle your situation will convince others that you're saved. See, I can't judge who saved and who not. But I sure got some doubts about some folks' salvation. Because the way they acting ain't convincing me that they saved. I can't say you're saved or you're not. But I can't have my doubts because you ain't convincing me 
because you ain't sacrificing. You stuck in yourself. You, you, it's about me, mine. I, I can't go outside of my own. Can I tell y'all something? See, Jesus, watch it, was in heaven. And heaven, can I preach, was different from earth, which means that there was a boundary line between heaven and earth. And Jesus went beyond his boundary line to save you. But yet we got boundaries. Yet I'm only go so far with you. I'm only give you so much. Oh, Reb, I've been going this, I've been doing this, Pastor. That's it. This, this is my boundary right here. Y'all ain't praying with me today. Can I tell y'all something? We could come up with every excuse in the book to miss worship, to not give. Are y'all with me, church? But the reality is that we have to understand that there is no excuse that outweighs my relationship. This man was truly convinced. And what convinced him, Will, was how he observed Jesus die. Never before had he seen a man die like this. Oh, Lord. See, this is what the text says. The text says that when, when, when he saw how Jesus cried up and gave up the ghost, see, when he saw how Jesus died, Holly, that convinced him that this was a person he never seen before. And see, not only was that his conviction, but then that was his connection. The Bible says that he used this word, this man, never, yeah, truly this man. The word used man here is anthropos, which is a generalization of humanity. In other words, he's saying this guy, Lord have mercy, He's saying this guy, this general person. Yeah, see, so what he's saying here is that I see the conviction I'm truly, but I have a connection with this person. Even though I haven't seen this before, but for some reason, I feel connected to him because he's a man like me. See, he, he saw something. He felt something. Let me leave y'all alone. I got a bunch more, but I'm, I'm going to leave you alone. But then he said, truly of a certainty, this anthropos, this guy, yeah, this person, this guy, this man, this man, this flesh, this blood, this man with a brain, with veins running through his body with a digestive system like mine. This man, oh Lord have mercy, are y'all with me, church, uh, was the son of God. I got to say one more thing. This word was is a powerful word here. Lord have mercy. He said this man was the son of God. It doesn't mean that he was and stopped being. This word that's used in the text is the Greek word I may. The word I may here is in the Greek imperfect, which means was, is, and will be. This is the same word that John used in John 1 and 1. In the beginning, I may, was the word. This word I may in the Greek derives from the third chapter of the book of Exodus. When God introduces himself to Moses, he says that I am that I am. This word I am means existent. It is the isms of God. It's saying that God is and God will forever be. He's saying here that this man was God, is God, and will forever be God. He's talking about the attribute of God in that God is eternal 
eternal. Uh, come on, somebody say uh, that he shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Everlasting Father, that he existed then, he exists now, he will exist. There is no time on God. There's no limits on God. There's no space confinement to God. This man is making a powerful, bold statement, saying truly, uh, this man is God. This man is somebody that we haven't seen. This man is somebody that we can't comprehend. This man was, this man is, this man will be, and I'm convinced beyond a shadow of a doubt. The text reads, the original text reads, that truly this man is God's son. That's how the text read. This man is God's son. Now you got to understand the psychology here. See, this man was a Roman. And in Roman mythology, it was not unusual to say that Achilles was the son of Jupiter. That he was a son of the gods. Y'all with me? But the difference here is this word, I may. See, in mythology, if we say that, yeah, Lord, that Achilles was a son of Zeus, the son of Jupiter, but is not using the word eternalness in it. He's saying here, I know about my Roman gods. Oh, Lord. I know about my Roman mythology. I know about Zeus. I know about Jupiter. I know about Hercules. I know about all these things. But them people dead. But I'm watching this man die, but yet he's still alive. Oh, I wish y'all walking with me today. An unlikely source. Let me leave y'all alone. An unlikely source. His confession following the connection and the conviction was that Jesus was the son of God. Can I tell y'all something? That there are some people that you don't even think that God is using. Lord have mercy. They look like an unlikely candidate to be used by God. Who would have thought that God would use this man who stood against the cross, who had the job of killing Jesus. But can I go and tell you something? That all of us had an assignment. And that was to kill Jesus. But uh, God looked beyond our faults. And uh, he saw our need can I go on tell you something that uh the confession of this man saying is uh, that God can use whomever he pleases it would uh, seem logical for John to make the confession but uh God didn't choose John even though John was at the cross the unlikely source was the one who watched him die her Lord God will use an unlikely source to fulfill his mission. 
God will use the one who we feel shouldn't be used. God is no respecter a person. Can I go on on and call the road? Lord have mercy. Come here, Moses. Why would God use a murdering fugitive like you to do such a mighty job? But God's ways are not always. God's thoughts are not our thoughts. The very person you think that God is not using is the main person that God is using to do his work. Oh, Lordy, ain't he all right? Oh, my, my, my. Come here, Noah. Oh, Lord, where your bottle at? We know you couldn't wait to get off the ark uh, to get a drink uh, but God used uh, an old drunkard uh, like Noah uh, to build an ark uh, can I tell you something uh, that God uh, is looking on uh, the inside uh, he wants uh, you to love him uh, on the inside uh, he wants you uh, to have faith uh, on the inside. Uh, he wants you uh, to be faithful uh, and loyal uh, and loving uh, on the inside. Uh, oh, Lord, uh, come here, David. Uh, oh, Lord, uh, we know uh, you got a problem, David. Uh, you got a wandering eye. Uh, Y'all ain't with me yet. Uh, can't keep your eyes uh, off of women. Uh, killing husbands uh, to sleep with their wives. Uh, but God said uh, that my plan uh, will succeed. Uh, hold on. Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, won't he do it? Uh, won't he do it? Uh, I need some money. Uh, Oh, Lord, come here, rehab. I know, girl, you a whore. You done slept with a lot of men. I know you ain't no good at the core, but I need you to drop a rope for the spies. God will use whomever he pleases when he gets ready, uh, ain't God all right? Uh, somebody say yes. Uh, somebody say yes. Uh, oh, Lordy, uh, let me call one more. Uh, Elijah, uh, you're running from Ahab. Uh, Elijah, uh, you're running from Jezebel. Uh, but God says, uh, I'll still use you uh, to get on your knees. Uh, Restore the law. I'll use you uh, to call down fire. Ain't he all right? Uh, somebody said uh, that cry baby Jeremiah, oh weak timid Jeremiah, said uh, down in the cave, Lord, uh, is like fire, uh, like fire. Shut up in my bones, uh, won't leave uh, me alone. Uh, anybody know uh, that God can use you uh, in spite of your trouble, uh, in spite of your hang up, uh, in spite of what you're going through, uh, in spite of what you've been through, uh, that God still can use you. Uh, my daddy used to sing the song, uh, Use me, Lord, uh, in my service. Uh, Draw me near, close to thee, and daddy would be our rhythm, but he said, I'm willing, I'm willing to follow you, I'm 
I'm willing uh, to go all the way. Uh, can somebody say, uh, use me, Lord. Uh, use me, Lord. Uh, I might not have uh, what Joe Blow have. Uh, I might not be able uh, to sing like somebody. Uh, I might not be able uh, to preach like so-and-so. Uh, I might not be able uh, to be like so-and-so. Uh, but here I am uh, with all my faults. Uh, here I am uh, with all my hang-ups. Uh, here I am uh, with all my sinful ways. Uh, Praise me, Lord. Praise me, Lord. Clean me uh, on the inside. Use me. Uh, make me fit uh, for your service. Uh, and the Bible says uh, that Jesus, uh, that the soldier, uh, after Jesus uh, had been beat all night, uh, after Jesus uh, had suffered all night, uh, that Jesus uh, had his back open uh, with wounds uh, after Jesus uh, had carried the cross. Uh, you got to see something. Uh, the soldier uh, had been with Jesus uh, the whole time. Uh, the soldier saw her. Uh, Jesus beat her. Uh, the centurion saw her. Uh, Jesus whipped her. Uh, the centurion saw her. Uh, how they mocked him. Uh, the centurion saw her. Uh, how they did him bad, but what moved him is that Jesus never said a mumbling word. Can I tell y'all something? Hold your peace. Let God fight for you. Hold your peace. Let the Lord work it out. Why folk trying to kill you? You hold your peace. Why are they talking about you? Hold your peace. Why folk ain't with you? Uh, just hold your peace uh, and let the Lord, uh, let the Lord, uh, let the Lord, uh, let the Lord uh, fight your battle. Uh, you got the Red Sea in front of you, Pharaoh behind you, mountains around you. Uh, stand still uh, and watch the Lord uh, work it out. Uh, Cause somebody here uh, then been through the storm. Uh, you held your peace up. You let them talk about you. You let them walk away from you. But God brought you out. And now you can praise. Now you can shout. Now you can praise. Now you can worship. Because you can say like this interior. Truly. 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 Ah, truly. This must be uh, the Son of God. Because uh, can't nobody uh, do me like Jesus. Uh, this got to be uh, God's Son. Uh, can't nobody uh, rock me in the midnight hour. Can't nobody uh, wipe the tears from your eyes. Uh, can't nobody uh, be a mother for the motherless. Uh, can't nobody uh, be a father for the fatherless. Uh, can't nobody uh, forgive me of my sins. Uh, after all you've done, uh, the Lord still uh, choose you. Uh, say yeah, say yeah, say yeah. And he's all right. Uh, somebody said uh, that when the Lord died, uh, when Jesus died, uh, and he gave up the ghost, uh, this man was convinced uh, that can't nobody uh, do that but God. Uh, that must be God's son, uh, how he died. Uh, the Bible says uh, that about three o'clock uh, that he dropped his head uh, in the locks of his shoulder and he gave the Greek word, uh, Talithios, uh, which means this finish. Uh, that means my work is done. Uh, that means that it's all over. That means that what Satan uh, undid in the garden, uh, that Jesus did it and put it back together. Somebody say uh, that Jesus uh, put it all, all back. Uh, and when Jesus uh, put it all, all back, uh, he said it's finished. Uh, gave up the ghost uh, and he died. Uh, 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 and somebody said that they made a mistake. Uh, 
put him down in a grave. Uh, he went down to hell, uh, preached to the captive. Uh, but on Sunday morning, on Sunday morning, uh, on Sunday morning, uh, he got up uh, with all power, with all power, with all power. Say yes, and he's all right. God will use you in spite of you. God will use you because he needs you. He wants you in his word. He wants you to tell folk that can't nobody. Do you like the Lord? Say yeah. Say yes. Say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. Watch him. Tell him, watch me die. Tell him, watch me struggle. Tell him, watch me go through. Because I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'm down now. You ain't helping me. But don't worry about it. I'm on my way back. Everything that goes down, every person that goes down for the Lord, God will, God will bring you back up. God will restore your health. God will restore your finances. God will restore your joy. Say yes, say yes, say yes, say yes, say yes. Say the Lord will work it out. Anybody know that my Savior, he got a name. Do you know his name? Do you know his name? Tell in his name, Jesus. And unlikely, so is how. Who would have thought? Who would have thought that the same one who watched them die was the same one who, by watching them die, his life was changed? Keep watching me. It's going to change you. You keep watching me, it's going to change you. Oh, Lord. If you keep watching what God is doing in me, it's going to change you. Theos, when we tell people we're on the Lord's side, they look at us and say, uh-uh, can't be you. But can I tell y'all something? See, God will take those who people leastly likely would think God would use. And that's who God going to use. Come on, somebody. Let me leave you alone. Hallelujah. Dear God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you. God, for just making us a part of what you're doing. It's not about us, but it's about you. Lord, it's about what you've done for us. We thank you. Father, we thank you. We glorify you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your precious Holy Spirit. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. Now, Lord, we're about to leave this place. But we'll gather again in your name, if it be thy will. Until we gather again, protect us. Be with us, God. Watch over our families, our children. Lord, we thank you. We give you the glory in Jesus' name. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit. Rest rule and abide with all of us now, henceforth and forevermore. Every heart say amen, amen, and amen.